Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and in this episode, I talked to Johan Fritzell from Holy Smoke Barbecue in Sweden. You're going to love it. He's super interesting, super passionate about barbecue, super passionate about American-style barbecue, his barbecue joint in Sweden with uh, another Johan, who I can't pronounce his last name, so I apologize to him, but they have a place. It's like a destination location, kind of like Salt Lake is in Austin or outside of Austin in Driftwood. They serve meals on the weekends right now. Barbecue on the weekends are open from Good Friday for six months, but they have these amazing barbecue classes where they fly out barbecue personalities and uh, barbecue pit masters from the United States. Uh, there's one coming up in July that's going to have Billy Durney and Pat Martin and Sam Jones and Wayne Mueller and it's just killer and I'm going to try to go to it to so report back to you guys but it, they've had Matt Pittman, Jess Pryles, Mo Kaysen, Myron Mixon, tons of guys have come out over the years. It's super interesting. I really think you'll like it and if you like what you see please subscribe but enjoy this. I know you will. Good uh, Good afternoon for you. I guess it's, it's eve- is it four o'clock right now for you? 4:30. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's five o'clock. Five o'clock. All right. Well, GMT plus one. Oh, gee. <laughs> well, thank you for making this work. You you did better math than I did. <laughs> it's five o'clock here. Okay. All right. Well, so so how did you get your start? How did you were you in barbecue at the beginning? No, uh, uh, I'm by no means uh, by no means a chef. I do enjoy. Uh, I mean, I, I cook. You know, like as normal people do. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but kind of uh, get stuck in things, and barbecue just like uh, was one of those things that was it was very easy to get hooked up and stuck, and and uh, most of all surprised the, by the fact that this was it's kind of a blind spot, you know. We we're in, uh, we have a very long tradition of like overnight cooks. We have a long tradition of uh, smoking meats. Uh, we do grill. Everybody grills. There's a lot of like meat and fire. But the the combination of like you know the te- the smoke the temperatures the long cook times uh, for some reason and, and we mean Sweden is the most Americanized country in the world that's defined. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it that's is. what I've heard. <laughs> uh, we eat everything without any kind of criticism out of the U.S. hand. So uh, for me it was a, a, and still is a really big question mark why we haven't imported that uh, this. Uh, kind of cooking or this kind of tradition yet uh, there's so many other stuff that that we that we import uh, uh, or replicate here from the US but for some reason this was I don't know too much work maybe yeah, I don't yeah. know but, but uh, this went from um, a backyard thing uh, total fascination over like putting a pork butt in a in the bullet smoker at that time okay and then uh, opening it like 12 hours later and just like mmm <laughs> What's this? What's going There's on? Something pretty fascinating. Uh, and right? Nobody else has seen it either. So, th- so that was the, that was basically. I did this for a couple of years, like here in the backyard, and then we it just kind of, I don't know, came across some restaurant guy who's just like, well, why don't you let's, why don't you supply us with that, with this, uh, with this product? Oh, and, interesting. And, and that's that's how it's basically started with some kind of like cooking in the backyard for some other restaurants, and then along the way realizing that someone should. Someone should really t- take care of this whole issue and just start, try to do something proper out of it. That's kind of how it started. Like, and that, it's not more than, I think it's six six years ago. Wow, it's, that's it's very, very recent. Very. It's recent. a very short. Uh, <laughs> we have a very short tradition of American barbecue in Sweden. <laughs> it's about five years old. That's so funny. It goes way back to 2011. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then at that point, is that when, because I, I heard from Matt Pittman that you went on a tour of the United States. You started going to different barbecue restaurants. Was no, that- we had to, I think we, were, I think we were at home here. I think we spent the first two years, I can't remember now. There, there's, there's happened a few things since then in, in this topic. But, but we, I think we, I think that we, uh, after the first year, because I mean, we couldn't get a brisket at that time. Really? It doesn't exist here. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, of course it does. I mean, the cow is still the cow, you know. <laughs> and the, the pig is the pig. The, the hog is the hog. But 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 you're butchering things a completely different way. So so, uh, I think that's I think that maybe that's about five years ago. We we decided to do the first uh, you know meat crusade. Okay. And I flew for two, and for some reason, as everybody else got, uh, got this idea about Central Texas, that was that was supposed to be it. 
mm-hmm. which I still to some point might think it is. But but that's where we that's where we started this kind of uh, meet crusades. So and, and came across Matt and came across a lot of other people. Uh, and then we we spent about a, yeah almost a month every year uh, over there in some way eating meat. So you still do that? You you go across yes. the United States or just Texas? No, we've been we've been uh, we've been not all over the place, but uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do you go to the, do you go to the Carolinas at all, or do you go to? Yeah, absolutely. We did we did that last. Uh, we did that. We were there two years ago. We were there this spring. Okay. We were in uh, Charleston again. So we did this tour. That was I think winter. It's about a year and a half ago when we drove from Washington D.C. down to Charleston through North and South Carolina, <laughs> up to Atlanta, Georgia. Took left out to Alabama uh, to have some chicken and white sauce. Headed north to Nashville. Went up to uh, Kentucky to eat mutton. Headed left over to, uh, <laughs> let's see, what's that? St. Louis and Kansas City. Kansas City. Uh, and down to, uh, down to Dallas, Austin. And then, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's, good. Oh, that sounds uh, so fantastic. <laughs> the a, hashtag is like 15. People were kind of following for the first four. I think we did 65 restaurants in 15 days. 65 restaurants in 15. Wow, good job. Uh, That's. I think it was very smart, but it was it was it was educate it was education. We learned a lot and we met a lot of fantastic people. Yeah, that's that's also too. You guys don't have that tradition that maybe camaraderie that you're bringing back to Sweden, that kind of brotherhood of barbecue. That, that was the first. That was for me. That was when we did this first. Uh, when we did this first. Sorry, it's okay. I, it's my son. He's at the supermarket with grandmother buying Christmas gifts. I, I really need to see what what they're up to. One second. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, uh, no, but the first, the first. Uh, I mean, I think the biggest thing when we after this first like meat trip mm-hmm. to Austin, it was super cool. The fact that we've eaten like you know, the brisket, the beef short ribs, and and just like met, seen all those people, and been to all those places. And there was a lot of like. Uh, boxes that was ticked during that first trip. But the biggest, uh, I think the biggest uh, thing for me when, when, when we kind of like summarized the trip on the way back on the plane uh, was that uh, this whole community thing. Mm-hmm. And it was so open, you know, totally open arms. There is, I mean, there is basically no secrets. In Central Texas, there's not so much of secrets. It's more like if you got, it's 50 50 or 1 to 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Salt and pepper. Salt, there. Salt I mean, it's, pepper. It's, it's not that much. There's no much. There's not so much fuss about it. But, but it was a, it was a really big thing for us because we were complete rookies at that time. Still are, but kind of on a higher level. But we had really no clue about anything. And the way that we were welcomed uh, was completely unique and very. That was like my biggest. That was the biggest. Really, the biggest uh, uh, reward. Like mm-hmm. during that trip. Uh, and had it's also been for us a, 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 a very important thing because you should know, even her, it sounds completely ridiculous for you, but I'd say that n- nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10, they don't, they don't have a clue what they're going to like eat when they come to see us. They've that's, never had this before. That's They've never eaten fascinating. This. I, I, I heard about that from Matt too, and I was, I was fascinated. And, uh, and also, I think it comes from the, the way uh, that, that many barbecue restaurants are built because a normal, normal restaurant, then you have, I mean, there is a door. And there's the kitchen, and it's a no entry zone. And there's so many. I mean, you know, there are so many barbecue joints where the pits are like almost like inside the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a closer interaction between the pit master or the kitchen people and the and the and the and the people visiting. That's true. Uh, which like makes the you know makes the talk uh, makes people talk with each other. I think that's. Uh, I mean, when we built the restaurant, we did put the pit in the in the very middle. Out in the public space where a lot of people are sitting to eat. That's where, like, the. For that interaction. And, yeah. It's really lives. Uh, or live at the time. Now we built a separate smokehouse, but it's still, like, totally, like, open and, and available for people to come and have a look. See, and there is fantastic. something that something happens with people when, you know, when you open a smoke round, there's, like, you know, 25 briskets or 500 pounds of short ribs or whatever. Something happens to people when they see mm-hmm. this. Uh, yeah, it's a connection. It's like a primal connection with, and then also with the people. Yeah, it's camaraderie. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a very, very important uh, part of this whole experience. Oh, really. for sure. Well, the, did you have your when you were supplying for the restaurants? Did you have in mind that okay, eventually I'm going to be opening a restaurant? Not at all. No, 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 no. Absolutely, not. I'm not a restaurant. That was a, why should I do that? I'm not a restaurant. I don't know nothing about that. The the, the thing it, it unfolded like. 
at some point we moved like you know we put this like bit this we put two containers in one of my friends uh backyard that was basically where that's how it started and we were supposed to have this like super small scale production there of this uh, smoked meats and and uh and do some kind of events and catering. That was the whole plan. Okay. But then it got kind of cozy, and you know, you're there all the time since it takes forever. So, mm. so I was always sitting there. Uh, people started as well. You, you should have a restaurant. And no, we should, no way. We're not going to have a restaurant. But, but okay. But at least you should you should sell meat by the pound. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Why not? I mean, there's a lot of I don't know what you call it. Farm sales, so like. You know, when you go to the farmer and you buy some eggs and you go... Yeah, like you know, farmer's market or yeah, roadside market. market. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Was, that was kind of the plan uh, to to uh, uh, to be open, you know, like open on Saturdays for a couple of hours, midday, and, and sell, uh, sell smoked meats. Mm -hmm. uh, that could have been... A, I mean, if we were smoking like, I don't know, 500 pounds or 1,000 pounds of meat, we, we might as well smoke another 200 pounds. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> That's uh, true. Or whatever the volume there were at that time. So... so uh problem is though when you're located this holy smoke barbecue is located in the middle of absolutely it's like i don't know salt pig like in the middle of nowhere <laughs> okay uh on a field uh in someone's garden um a bunch of containers selling meats that you've never heard of <laughs> what is a brisket <laughs> that's yeah. and it's also like it's it's fairly expensive uh we 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 do we only work with the with US beef, we only work with Creekstone meats, and it's it's not super cheap in Sweden. I, can no, I can't imagine it is. No, <laughs> not at all. It's not cheap here. I can manage to sell, you know, uh, meat, smoked meats at that price point. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's like let's make sandwiches, but that's it. No, you know, no restaurants. Sandwiches. You know. The people were coming out, right? That, you know, uh, you know, uh, kind of convince yourself. Okay, it's going to be worth the money. Uh, and Sweden is super strict in many ways, and one of them is uh, the whole um, uh, alcohol issue. So you can't really, uh, you can't sell, uh, you can never serve alcohol. You can never give away beer in a, you know, in the in the in the waiting line. You would never. It's totally <laughs> forbidden. You can't give away alcohol, um, it, and it's the law. So that's kind so, of California is like it, that too. Yeah, and you can't uh, you can't just have a hot dog stand or like sell sandwiches and and sell alcohol. Oh. It has to be like no, it has to be more complicated than that. It has to be kind of more like like a cooked a complete meal. You need a diversified menu. <laughs> so the whole thing, I mean, it, we were open for I think ten minutes, and then someone asked for a beer. You know, the first day we opened, they bought a sandwich and can have a beer with us. It's just like ah, that's super basic. Of course, we need a beer, and. Um, and then that's the way it, that's the way it kind of unfolded. So we need beer, and to be able to have beer, we need to have like a diversified menu. Okay, oh, so okay, okay. that's that's do, that, so that was kind of it wasn't meant to be at all. Uh, interesting. Uh, and that's the way uh, that's the way how how it became a restaurant. And, and what were, what were your hours at the beginning? Uh, we opened uh, we opened at eleven o'clock, and we were open until we were sold out. Okay. And that was anything from one and a half to three hours. Uh, I, I was like a self man, so I was smoking the meats at night and then, you know, doing yeah. So so that was and it was Saturdays and that was 2000, 2014. Okay. In late summer two thousand fourteen, so we were open for ten Saturdays and okay. were blown away by the fact that we had like you know eighty to hundred customers every Saturday buying these sandwiches. We thought it was like <laughs> massive. Uh, <laughs> And that's when we decided, okay, I think we got something. We found something here. Okay. Uh, and then we, we decided to like, okay, let's do this. And it basically took the shape it has now. We kind of expanded, expanded it. And, and how, what are you open right now? What are your hours that you're, you're – it's, it's only like it's only six months a year, is it? Or? Yeah, we open on Good Friday, uh, which is normally like end of March or early April. It's like, you know, in the zeros, Celsius, like 30 degrees snowing. <laughs> That's the way it is when we open. And then uh, we're open uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday uh, until the end of September. September. And then during summer, from like mid-June till late August, we open Fridays as well. Okay. And then, so then what, right now, are you planning, you're planning for Good Friday next year right now? Or is that kind of what yeah, you're we're doing? Not, we're not that far yet, but we're, yeah, that's, that's kind of, 
Right now we're planning for we're planning for, for the cooking classes. That's what we they'll release later this week. That's that's also one of the things we do because we think that we need to. Yeah, I want to hear about that. That's exciting and it's interesting. I don't think a lot of it's people. A cool thing. It's a cool thing. Uh, um, we're selling. Uh, uh, we're selling Myron smokers, uh, and we're selling the big one next. We're saying we're Myron selling all sense, yeah. kind of a, It has that's the way it, it goes. We have we, we do become some kind of one stop shop for for barbecue. Uh, th there are more restaurants in Sweden, and there, especially now. Okay, but still, you know, the distance between the smoke signals are like <laughs> the closest one is like one and a half hour away. Two hours. <laughs> okay, that's a good distance. And there's, a hand, there's maybe ten fifteen in total in this super tiny country we live in. Uh, <laughs> But that's one of the things we do to to kind of like uh, I don't know spread the gospel, invite uh, American pitmasters to to come here and and, and educate. And, and, and those are they're pretty intense. So this started in 2015 or 2016. It started in 2015. Uh, yeah, 2015, the first one. And they uh, and they come out and it's an all day event, right? Yeah, it commences somewhere like seven in the no nine o'clock in the morning, okay, and then it continues uh, for like I don't know twelve fourteen hours. Uh, <laughs> that's we that's bring so them killer. From all the, the states, we might as well squeeze all the info we can out of them. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it's a it's an extremely nice way to spend a day. There actually there's classes as well as they're interacting with the pitmasters, right? Yeah, there is. There's the, the, everybody has their own like their own way. We've had Matt Pittman here numerous times. He's had three classes here. He's, there's always like a lot of interaction here. Okay. We had uh, Aaron and Daniel was here two years ago and that was... Uh, that was really cool. That's actually I think the first time I noticed you guys. Yeah, that was that was, that was was really... We had people flying out of the U.S. to take a class in Texas <laughs> Barbecue in Sweden. That's uh, amazing. That was really cool. No, but, uh, and then that day there was not that much interaction at all because it was it was like Aaron and Daniel talking the talk about uh, and Brown was here as well that makes sense. Uh, it, it, it's extremely uh, that differs a lot and you've had you've had you've had Mo Case and Jess Pryles right most been here Jess been here Myron's been here uh, we got uh, today we're releasing tickets to this uh, Super cool event where uh, Billy Journey, who was here from Hong Kong oh, last year, cool. is going to come with. Uh, it's coming back, and this time it's coming with uh, Wayne Miller, Sam Jones, and Pat Martin. Wow, Sam Pro Jones, right here. <laughs> That's cool. I guess you're coming then as well. What's you? that? You're coming then as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I would love to. I would. I'd be honored to come to any of your events. Yeah. <laughs> no, there is. No, we got a few. We got a. We got a nice lineup for next year. So we're releasing those tickets now for for. Is, well, I'm going to be putting a link to that in my, and I'll be talking yeah. about it in the yeah. beginning of my. Can you tell me? Could, do Do you have the list in your head right now? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Matt's coming back. Matt Pittman's coming back. He's doing a, a class on the big one egg. Uh, nice. Super popular. Uh, we sell a lot of eggs. It's. Uh, it is a really cool thing with oh, yeah. the egg. I like it a lot. We use it a lot. We cook. We cook a lot in the eggs as well. And my friend uh, has got one. Those are coming cool. back. Uh, Bill Dern is coming back, and he's bringing, as I told you, like Wayne Miller, uh, Pat Martin, and Sam Jones. The four of them are coming together. Oh, that's such a cool. Going to be this. That's going to be crazy. With Pat Martin too. That's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, so there's going to be a thing. What, there's one beef day, and which like turns into the pork, oh, uh, the whole hog day. So that, oh, that's going to be cool. Uh, uh, we, we, we got a few more uh, uh, things lined up. Okay. So that will be like within a few within a few days, and then there's also some really good Swedish chefs, uh, which is going to do some stuff here as well. I know. Are they are are you finding because you, like you said that there's there's maybe a handful like ten barbecue joints in all of Sweden right now? Is it? Do you think? Do you feel like it's starting to the momentum is getting there? People are starting to 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 guess experience it more and maybe are interested more. And absolutely. Absolutely, that's the way. But then we have there's so much, and it's also like there. Everybody does it their own way. Uh, everybody has their own like. I don't know if we have developed like a Swedish style of barbecue yet. I don't think so. Like, but but uh, everybody has their own way of doing things, depending on how much time and money they want to spend on like uh, doing this. We're, I'm extremely stubborn. That's one of my best and worst like uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> things with me. Uh, uh, but if yeah, 
What what do you Most, guys what do you guys on when you guys are open as a restaurant? What are you serving? Uh, we're serving uh, brisket, of course. Mm -hmm. Brisket, short ribs. We do sell short ribs. A lot of short ribs. Uh, it's the shack short ribs, the shorter ones. Okay. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. Um, they make a perfect serving. Like there's like four bones in one uh, in one rack, so they make a perfect like one person service. That, Sorry, that, sir. Yeah. I agree completely. Always pork ribs. Uh, there's always some kind of. Uh, Bigger cut if the, if it's like a shock beef or a, a, a pulled pork. There's some kind of sandwich meat. Uh, there is always chicken, uh, and then yeah, and then there's like the normal staples like sidewise the sides. Hey, yeah. Uh, sausages, of course. Do you guys of make course. your own sausage? Have you done that yet? Uh, we used to do. Uh, we used to do up until that's uh, six months ago because uh, now you can actually buy them like in supermarkets all over Sweden so so we wow. do uh, we do make them but we do make them in a factory we don't make them like in the physical building we're at but it's, it's still the same sausage so it's it's your, like, your, so your guy's sausage is sold in supermarkets yeah oh wow that's cool I didn't know about that no that's uh, yeah that and some pork uh, we, we, we implemented like um, US uh, What's it called? Butcher scheme, mm -hmm. like the way you butcher meat. Mm -hmm. Normal, uh, the way we used to butcher, the way we still, the vast majority of ribs are cut in a very poor way here in Sweden. Uh, <laughs> the belly is super sacred, you oh, know, wow. when you do bacon. So, so we cut them out really, really tight on the rib cage. So there's basically just the meat that's between the bones. Oh. Super sad, and we. Um, Oh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a shame. We're one, one of the biggest plants in Sweden. So, so they've implemented basically a St. Louis, traditional St. Louis cat rib, which is also like in the supermarkets in uh, oh. Sweden. How cool is that? How, who would ever thought that you would be doing this? Like that would yeah, but to... it, This whole thing is completely like, it's like a joke. <laughs> it's really happening. <laughs> uh, but I think, I mean, that's the, I mean, it's the thing. It's, I mean, it's not that we invented anything. Or we kind of mm -hmm. we, we're, in, we're interpreting this thing really, and some things are like converted or mm -hmm. adapted to what works here. But but most of it is like a straight, uh, I don't know, copy. Yeah, ripping. or an import. You're importing a, a certain yeah. style and a, mm -hmm. a a certain type of food. But but it's also it's you. I'm sure the experience itself too is unique to what you guys have because. A lot of people like going out. Like you said, it's 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 not it's like going out to the Salt Lake. You're going. People are, are traveling a distance to to see your mm -hmm. to eat your food, right? Yeah, but this is yeah, but that's that's it's definitely like that. Yeah. I mean, if someone's been in the car for four hours, it's just like okay, yeah. that's it's not like abnormal by any means uh, at all. And there is a lot. There is you know in the busy summer days, there's way over a thousand people. It's oh, crazy. Wow. That is, and, and it's and it, people hang out, right? People hang out for many hours, right? To... Yes and no. Oh yes, and it, no. it's it's <laughs> there's a lot of people. You you eat your food and then you just kind of like yeah, <laughs> uh, you kind of done. But you, I, mean, I guess you spend an average, I'd say, maybe two hours. Yeah, oh, that's cool. I two guess hours. that's kind of that's like a normal visit to a barbecue yeah. place in yeah. In, yeah. in Texas or Carolinas or. Yeah. But it's it's interesting too. Like what you, what you a lot of people have come from not having a background in barbecue in in the United States, and then they're they're shocked that they have a barbecue joint and that they have the the popularity. So it's it's you it's kind of a similar experience that you have in Sweden, but it's it's in Sweden. <laughs> it's but the isn't there there is, there is this is something we should ask Daniel Vaughn about. But there isn't there there is some kind of revitalization in the entire barbecue industry, even in the US, isn't it? There was a barbecue joint popping up like everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it's uh, starting to, and the, and especially the Texas style is popping yeah. up everywhere, even yeah. in yeah, even in Japan and China. It's 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 there's something there's like it's I think people and a lot of people have the opportunity to travel to Texas maybe for business and then they start to fall in love with that style, or even mm -hmm. the Carolinas. Yeah. No, but there are so many things in the supermarket that's called Texas today. Oh yeah. There's yeah. So I'm sure you can find like you can go there and buy like 30 products in the supermarket that's called either San Antonio, Austin, Texas, or there is a ton of them. That's true. And there was even like when I was a kid, there was even like like hot sauces that were mm -hmm. or like salsas that were Texas that were just Texas sold. Beef. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Texas beef. Yeah. But then there was also there was a, like a, a picante sauce or something that people were buying. That uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was, and it was just because like so yeah, the Texas brand is it's it's powerful and people strong yeah, yeah that, that's very true i didn't think about it that way is there anything else anybody else that people would need to know about your 
about what you're doing? Because I think it's the address, maybe, if they want to come over. Oh yeah, well, I'm going to put. <laughs> I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put a map. <laughs> no, but this is just like it, it's. It's a super. Uh, it's a thrill. Like you know, every day this way, and, and the way this has unfolded, uh, we're super, uh, super fortunate uh, to be in the position that we are. We worked hard for it, but there's there's also many. If there's ever like, uh, uh, if it's ever about luck, mm -hmm. you know. We we were all like if we're, if you're flipping a coin, we're always like it's always flipped in our favor. <laughs> favor. That's yeah. great. Ah, uh, how how many people are uh, in your classes usually? Like how many seats? Uh, between forty and sixty. How quickly depending. do they sell out? Does it sell depending. out? Depending anything from like like same night till uh, not selling out at all. Oh okay okay. Depending on um, depend, but m most of them do. Depending on how much time we, how much we. Um, yeah, depending also on what topic it yeah. is, De depending on what, what what people are and how much, because you, you you should we need to know you need to know that we are still in Sweden. Mm -hmm. We are very 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 far away from the American market <laughs> circuit. <laughs> if you go on the street today and ask someone, well, who's I see it says Sam Jones your T-shirt there. Yeah. I mean, they wouldn't. Is that a jazz musician? That's what they would say. You know? like, <laughs> That's they would funny. Have no clue. <laughs> It, well, I'm, I'm trying to, them, educating them. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I'm trying to do that too. I'm trying to just, I just love the barbecue world so much and it, I love the people and it's, this is kind of like my way to, to connect with someone like you as well as my opportunity to share what you do and what everyone else does. That's kind of what I love to do. So I, uh, I, I appreciate you taking the time. Definitely. It's, no, it's sorry. It took, it took four months to get here. That's okay. No, that's fine. Hey, I'm patient. It's like a slow cook, a four month cook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, how come, how come, uh, how come, yeah, this is maybe an off topic question, but how come, how, how did you start this? How come that this, how come that you started to do this? Well, I used to go to North Carolina a lot for business. Okay. I was in the furniture industry. Okay. So I would go there and I started to eat, I ate like a Lexington barbecue and a bunch of different like uh, little small barbecue joints that were along the way. I fell in love with it in that sense. And then one of my friends sent me a uh, uh, Gates barbecue in a cooler, like in, a, in an igloo cooler with dry ice, Gates from mm -hmm. Kansas City. And then um, I realized that I had in California, we just, it's, we have a culture of, of covering everything with sauce and mm -hmm. there was no Texas barbecue, no Texas style barbecue. And so I just, I fell in love with it and I started to do a, I created, um, um, whenever I get into something like research wise, I, I created a barbecue joint search engine with about 3,500 mm -hmm. barbecue joints. And I'm, I'm relaunching that, but I, I, I created a barbecue joint search engine, then I created a blog, and then I started to become friends with different people in the barbecue industry. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Texas for nine months and worked at a barbecue joint. Okay. Well, but that's the thing. When you get the, it's the same. It's, when you get, can I get this momentum? No, who else can do these videos now? Nobody. I mean, it's your thing. You <laughs> it's my. <laughs> but really. Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. It's, Thank that's, you. Since everybody else has been there, of course, mm -hmm. you know. I, I don't think, you, you're not getting turned down that often, really, uh -uh. when you ask someone. No. No. No, so, it's, so, uh, uh, that's it's, cool when you're fortunate to like find something uh, to just as we've done. It's, yeah. it's more. I mean, someone else could have done this. That's someone true. Else I, I often wonder why. I think also it's a uh, the aspect that uh, I have a fantastic like companion or probably business partner who's who's a super skilled uh, chef, uh, which is what we need. Uh, but 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 there are so many things that the fact that I'm not a trained chef, you do things like you know in a certain way that a trained chef would never do, mm -hmm. and at some point it's like super super stupid. It gets really really bad. Mm -hmm. But so many other times it gets like really 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 fantastic mm -hmm. just because you don't think you know. As a train, you would never open a restaurant in Sweden who would like after three hours have run out of meat. <laughs> who would have thought of that? It's completely contrary to anything that anybody would do. I mean, doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, we're gonna open this restaurant. It's gonna be super popular, and we're not gonna have any food. Like when half the day is gone, we're gonna be out of food. Okay, you can but, tell that to the bank when you're gonna get there. No, 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 no. <laughs> When you're gonna, but also when you're too, gonna, like it's like people are a lot of people are still trying to get their head around that across the country here in the United States, but like in California, people don't. That's what I think. That, that's what I. That's what I think that that it makes a lot of difference when we this gets kind of political. So so, but what, I mean, when we 
we still been in so many states eating barbecue. Mm-hmm. And I must say, it's, it is, you know, when you come, when it, you know, you realize when you come, when someone has cooked overnight uh, and then you eat it fresh. Mm-hmm. There are so many restaurants, you know, you come there at seven o'clock at night and you just know that. It's that we do. I mean, we're open like on Saturdays, we're open like late. Mm-hmm. And we cook, it's a separate cook shift. We need to you know, start another shift. For to sure, get them. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Still run out of meat at like between three and five o'clock in the afternoon. We kind of like sold out of most of the cuts. Yeah. And then there is like a new batch coming out. But mm-hmm. there's, yeah, that's the way I think you should do it. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of like Style Switch mm-hmm. does that. Like there's certain places that have like an evening shift and you have to do it that way. Yeah. You can't, you can't. But not everybody does it. I can tell you that. Oh, I know that too. And that's, uh, yeah. that makes me sad. <laughs> makes me really sad. <laughs> it's not that's terrible and it's and it, a lot of places to do serve reheated food the next day which i don't like mm-hmm. that as well yeah you could tell that but uh thank you again for your time and i hope merry yeah, christmas man. and uh, uh do, can you can you email me the link to your to the classes so that i have the, yeah, spe- absolutely. the specific... uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna put it up i'm gonna put it up um i'm gonna put it up tonight okay yeah this might even, i think this actually might attract people from the uh, these four guys together here for 48 hours that's gonna be it's gonna be a <sighs> That, Super cool. That's uh, going to be about the most amazing experience I can imagine. That's going to sell out. Yeah, you're more than welcome to. If you, I mean, if you get on that plan, you, you don't, you don't need to buy a ticket. I'll send you one. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you so much. It's the Monday, Tuesday, first week, last week of July. I think it's July 30 and 31st. Okay, I'll be there for sure. All right. Well, so let's keep in touch. All right. Oh well, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Take care. Thanks uh, again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Bye.